Hello everybody, this is Fauna, your host for Cat's Tea and Witchcraft. This is the first episode of the podcast and I really hope you enjoy this episode and future episodes. Um, like I said, my name is Fauna and I am an eclectic Wiccan. And the reason I started this podcast was kind of to help grow my own path in the craft but also help others along the way because I want to be able to kind of establish my own online community when it comes to Wicca, witchcraft, or anybody who's interested in the variety of topics that come along with it. So today I'm kind of go over some definitions of witchcraft and kind of my own journey and my views on witchcraft. I'm not going to say everything that I believe when it comes to all the little bits and details, but I'm going to kind of give you a broad idea of the things I believe as an eclectic Wiccan. And just so you guys know ahead of time, if you are not familiar with witchcraft and Wicca itself, there are different types of Wicca, but I'm going to go over that in the second episode. So witchcraft. A lot of times when people think about witchcraft, they think about things in movies, they think about Harry Potter, they think about Hocus Pocus and all the things that come along with that. So when it comes to the definition of witchcraft, it depends on who you're talking to. So if you kind of look up the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition, it kind of goes over the idea of witches of what you would typically see in Hollywood. So some of the descriptions on it are, an ugly old woman, and someone who, honestly, yeah, so most of it is just kind of goes over when I look at it. I have it right in front of me. Okay, so a woman practicing usually black witchcraft, often with the aid of the devil or a familiar. Other names associated is a sorceress or a warlock, and you can also see the word hag in different things like that. So that definition is kind of where witches get their bad name, and I'm not saying Hollywood in and the dictionary is the reason that there's a bad name, but there's a long history in witchcraft being taboo. So I have a couple other definitions that you guys might be interested in hearing. One of them is actually from Wikipedia, and Wikipedia, sorry, and it says witchcraft is the practice of magical skills, spells, and ability. Witchcraft is a broad term that varies culturally and societally, and thus can be difficult to define with precision. Which is really true. It does depend on your culture and it does depend on you as a person. And my personal definition is the attempt to manipulate energy from the earth or the universe to get a desired result or asking for assistance from a divine being to provoke change. That's my definition of it when it comes to magic. So when it comes to that, people were like, oh, well, isn't that good or bad or why would you do that? If you believe in a divine power, wouldn't you leave it in their hands? Well, maybe, and it all depends on your view when it comes to religion and your own faith. And one comparison that I like to bring up when people are asking about it, which I don't openly talk about it in my life because I am personally am in the broom closet because there are people who don't know enough about the topic and sometimes it's just better avoid the conversation. But People who are a little more open, I compare magic to prayers. Magic is prayers just with a couple extra steps and you putting a little bit more of your energy into it. You honestly put a little bit more than a little energy into it. You put a lot of energy into it because a lot of magic is based on your intent. So from here, I think that's just a quick introductory to the definition of witchcraft because there's so much more we can go over, but we're going to go over a variety of topics in other episodes. So me as a witch, I've been practicing for almost about a decade. I started around when I was 18 years old, but I didn't actively consider myself a witch until I was in my 20s. And the reason was because I really didn't know as much about it as I would like. And... I kind of started at a young age and I think my entire life was really leading up to it. And a lot of people say the same thing, but not everyone has that experience and it really does vary from person to person. So I always had a feeling that there was just a little bit more out there in the universe, but I was kind of a skeptic because I also did really 
enjoy science and wanted to believe in science and I do believe in science I'm not saying in any way that I don't believe in modern medicine or science those are things that are very very important to the world and just everything around us so as a young age I always really enjoyed Halloween fantasy movies and books but then I also felt like there were other things around me I couldn't explain but I would always try to play them off as my brain being overactive reading too many books, watching too much TV, or just my eyes tricking me because I was tired or maybe had too much caffeine and sugar. All the excuses that people tell you that, oh no, it's not really there, you're just imagining things. So I tried to play that off for a while, but as I got older, there are things that I could not have an explanation for between knowing things almost ahead of time, like a sixth sense, no way am I psychic or have anything any sort of abilities like that and but there are people who do I personally do not or I might not just have tapped into it yet but fingers crossed but um there's little things that would happen in my life like maybe I would think I would see things or I would think about things and they would immediately happen the deja vu kind of thing just a variety of things that kind of makes you wonder but as I got older I started studying martial arts and then I started getting into meditation along with that and that kind of developed my spirituality without knowing it and as I graduated high school and was able to kind of dive into things drive places go to shops that my parents wouldn't take me to themselves just because they didn't know what they were and when I was 18 freshman in college I was introduced to crystals in Reiki for those who don't know what Reiki is it is a form of energy healing and if you're interested in learning more about that I will have a future episode and I started using crystals. Um, I'm not the type of person who will literally say crystals solve all my problems. If they are placebo or not, I think crystals do work to an extent. But they are not a solution to solve all your problems. Just like anything out there, there is not this magical cure for everything. (laughs) Sorry, magical. But like I said, I also believe in science as well. And from there, it kind of developed when I was 19 years old, almost 20 years old, I got attuned to be a practitioner in Reiki and I don't even know if I would even consider myself a practitioner but I practice Reiki at eight, 19 um, yeah 19 I got attuned to a first degree Reiki and then when I was turning 22 I got attuned for level 2 and right after that that is kind of when I got introduced to Wicca And from there, I was just kind of looking into different topics in regards to using crystals and Reiki and energy and meditation. And I'd heard of Wicca before, but I really hadn't found any resources that had come across my own research organically. But after, as the internet started to grow and more resources and stuff like that and becoming an adult and being able to do my own thing freely, it made it a little easier for me to take that route in. From there, I've been practicing Wicca, and I really do enjoy it. Like I said, I am eclectic, and that means you kind of take a little bit from other traditions, and you kind of turn it into your own practice. I personally work solitary, but also work with a group. Currently, I am just a seeker because it does take time. You take a year and a day class with the group to see if you work with them well, they work with you well, and that you really want to be a witch in that particular group. And a group for witches is called a coven. So I am not a full member of it, but I am a seeker and do look towards those members as mentors and they are wonderful people. So there's a couple of things I kind of want to go over with you that I feel anybody who is interested in witchcraft or knows someone that is a witch and just wants to have some more details on what it is um i'm gonna go over that with you right now one thing that people kind of get bogged down on is you do not need to cast spells or practice actively all day every day magic like i said is about intent you don't need to do spells all the time to be considered a witch you can practice magic and not call yourself a witch but it's all up to you because literally if you had to do a spell every day of your life to be considered a witch that would be crazy that's a lot of work a lot of energy and a lot of effort there is no way 
that I have enough energy, even as an adult who has a lot of energy, to be able to do that. So it's all about the little things. It could be just stirring your tea and putting intent into how you want your day to go and things that you want to go really smoothly or people that you hope might come across your path. Anything that you can think of positively that you want to happen that you can put into it. Maybe put that energy into your tea and stir it in and drink it. You could have nice baths or showers to visualize the dirt and negative energy coming off of you. It could be during your practice of yoga or meditation or just doing researching and reading into your form of witchcraft. So there's a lot of things you can do that doesn't involve straight magic and spells. And like I said, I already said that intent is a big part of magic. And when I mean intent is what do you want out of it? Why do you want to do magic? It's all about the energy you put into it and why you want to do it. So if I am doing a spell, say a love spell for example. I personally do not do love spells but I will get to that in future episodes. It's the intent. Why do I want to do this love spell? Say I really want to do a self love spell which might be the only love spell I will ever do. I put the intent of wanting to have positive thoughts, love myself, and expel any negative thoughts about myself. That is the concept of having intent. Because if you really don't know why you're doing something, honestly, it's probably not going to work. To be honest, if you don't truly want something and you don't have that intent in mind, you can't just kind of hope the universe knows what you want because it's like when you're asking someone for help they're like oh hey can you help me with this but you don't tell them what you want help with like it kind of defeats the purpose another thing is your journey is your own you can read a lot of books a lot of websites a lot of blogs and even listen to podcasts but your magical journey is your own you can learn from other people and you can do other practices and traditions that they do but you might not agree with everyone So maybe you decide that you really like astrology, but you have no interest in divination. Or maybe the opposite, or maybe you do love both, but your best friend, who is also a witch, hates all of it and only works with crystals and plants. So it's all up to you, and maybe you can dabble in a bunch of subjects and really see what you enjoy. But also in your life, you can start out doing one thing and completely transform it into loving something else and that's kind of the fun of the journey of being a witch so another thing that I feel that really gets people is when they do do spells they expect it to be instant a lot of the time that is not the case there is some magic and some spells that you might do in your life that take a really long time to kind of unfold the universe is here to assist you and help you and and it all depends on I guess on your practice and everything but if you're say asking for the love of your life to appear to you it's only going to happen when it's ready you can do the spell and you can actively kind of work on it and yourself but it doesn't mean it's going to happen when you want it to it's going to happen when you put in the effort into the spell when you actively look for dating if it's online dating if you're over the age of 18 and maybe it's going out with friends and meeting new people. You can't just expect a spell to work and sit on your butt and nothing happen, but also even if you do a spell, expecting it to happen the next day. It could, it might be the actual right timing, but you don't know that timing, that's up to the universe. And honestly from here, that's pretty much the main points that I wanted to go over and It's all about the energy that you put into it, the things that you really, really want and try, but it's also all up to you and how you do it. So thank you for listening to podcasts. I know it might not be super, super long. It's an introductory one. And I hope to see you guys next time. Feel free to follow me on social media for the podcast. On Instagram, it is Cats Tea and Witchcraft. Twitter, it is Cats Tea and Witch. And also, I do have a website, and you can find that in the description for the podcast, depending on the browser that you are using, either if you're on YouTube, watching and listening to this on Anchor, or on Spotify currently. In the future, I might try to upload the podcast to different platforms, but I'll get there eventually. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And other than that, have a great one.